it was the most yeah, advanced of the I think you understand that Gary is a majority black city. Mm -hmm. It is a city that has been colonized by Chicago. This airport does deportations because in the contract with Mayor Daley, it says that we can only do what Midway and O'Hare don't want to do. And so we do the deportations. We get no jobs out of that. We get nothing but heartache and pain. And so we want to say that the struggle of all the people here in Gary for jobs, for decent living, for respect and recognition is part of the struggle of immigrants for the same thing. So I want to invite up another speaker who is, in fact, a DACA recipient. Hi everyone, my name is Sara Galvan Orozco. I'm here with um, El Centro de Trabajos Unidos. I'm here because I I refuse to I refuse to apologize for being an immigrant. I feel like um, we all need to we, we should never apologize for being here and for having our parents bring us here for a better opportunity because. For me, I didn't have a choice, but and I, but I do have a choice to stay and make a future out of some of my um, education. And I just want to thank everyone that's here for supporting us and supporting all the rights that need the support. And thank you very much. I now invite Deborah from ATU 308. Good morning, everyone. My name is Deborah Lane. I'm the organizer for ATU Local 308 Woo! Rail Transportation. I see Eric Slater from 241. Um, we are so happy to come out and join this beautiful picture of what America needs to look like. All of us standing together as one, fighting for justice for all. All of us in a melting pot of immigration, if they want to know what immigrants look like, we are all immigrants. Exactly. We have to stand together because this, what they're doing with this DACA and deportation is, is a setback to modern day slavery. And it angers me because it reminds me of what they did to the four parents that came from Africa. They brought them over on slave ships with no windows and they took them away and broke up families. This America is founded on families. Family is full of love and united. And without families, we can't prosper. So what they're doing, bringing them here on buses with windows closed and taking them away, they're breaking families. Yeah. So we all must stand together and continue to fight. All of these rallies, all of these resistance shows the pure American way of we won't take the wrongness that these politicians, these big bankers are doing to us, even on our jobs. We must continue to fight. We must continue to stand. We must continue to unite with DACA. What's wrong with wanting to improve your life? Exactly. What's wrong with it? Nothing. And we have to stand together as one in love and unity, and we must fight back. Thank you all for coming, and remember, God loves you and ain't nothing you can do about it. Support extends beyond this area, so I'd like to invite Herbert Claros, who came all the way from Brazil. Roberto, ¿dónde está? <laughs> okay, thank you. Uh, I'm not speaking English very well, but I will try because Spanish. No, it doesn't speak Spanish. Spanish. <laughs> yes, I will try in English because the international struggle don't have words, no no have borders. This is no border, no have a different language. But uh, I'm I'm so glad to to hear with with us. Uh, the immigrants, uh, the, the struggles of the immigrants is very important, not only in the United States, not only in South America, but unite the world. 
the, the problem with the immigrants in Europe, the north of Africa, the Syria is a big cri human crisis. Uh, but it's a, it's a very shame for the United States uh, 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 the, the form that uh, the, wor the immigrant workers have a treatment here. It's a shame. Uh, I'm a Brazilian. Uh, I'm, I'm a metal worker in Brazil. I'm a member of a CSP Colutas. The CSP Colutas is a national trade union federation in Brazil. We represent a public and private workers in Brazil. We have many problems in Brazil uh, uh, of immigrants because Brazil use the Bolivian and the Paraguay immigrants to work in factories of pest factories but it's a slave conditions in Brazil. It's, it's a shame for us in Brazil too. Because the international struggle for, for the workers, the international struggle for bad con, be, uh, best condition for the workers, the, the international struggle for uh, the rights of the immigrants is the, the, is the, is the fight of the all workers around the world. Because this, I'm, I'm very proud, uh, I'm here to, to us, and I think this struggle is possible. Uh, um, defeat defeat the, the, the defeat the government, not only Trump, but all uh, governments uh, around the world. Thank you so much. Uh, my name is Paris Thomas. I'm a fast food worker at Popeyes from Chicago, Illinois. And, um, we here today because we stand with the immigrants that's being deported. Uh, we know it's not fair. We come here and fight hard for our families to live and be free. And it's not fair that we have to be deported. So that's why I'm here today, standing up for all you guys that's fighting hard and don't want to be deported. Thank you. Hola, mi nombre es Teresa Cervantes, soy trabajadora de uh, Macanos. Mi nombre es Teresa Cervantes. Estamos aquí de la organización Lucha por 15. Estamos en solidaridad de, de todos los inmigrantes y inmigrantes apoyando a los jóvenes de DACA que todos tienen el derecho de tener un futuro. I am here as part of Fight for 15 and to defend all of the immigrants and the DACA students. Um, uh, todos uh, los jóvenes tenemos derecho de tener un futuro de, 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 de todos los países. Todos aportamos a Estados Unidos, orientales o occidentales. All young people have the right to a future, and we are here to defend that right. No nos vamos a dar por vencidos. Tenemos que luchar por los jóvenes porque ese es el que dan a nuestro país y nuestro futuro a Estados Unidos. And we're not going to give up this fight and back down because we will stand with all the young people who are fighting for a future. Como todos tenemos familias uh, de diferentes razas, no vamos a, a soportar el racismo. Todos tenemos nuestros derechos y vamos a, a seguir luchando. And we're not going to let them divide us by race. And we're going to stand with everybody against racism and discrimination. And we are in the fight for the long haul. Right. And in city. We have 40% unemployment among black youth, and all of the development is going into gentrification. They're making little pockets of wealth, and they are forgetting the people who live here. We have a sister who came all the way from California, and she is from the Sacramento chapter of LACLA. Hey. I want to say it's an absolute honor to be before my brothers and sisters here in Chicago. And uh, I want to say that uh, when I was a little girl, uh, when my parents were uh, on the great boycott for the United Farm Workers Union, we lived in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. So I feel like I'm really at home back east. 
All right, I, I walked a lot of picket lines back east. Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, Chicago. We traveled across this country on the great boycott. And right now, I'm back in Chicago. My name's Desiree Rojas. I'm the president of Labor Council for Latin American Advancement, uh, Sacramento chapter. We're a Latino, Chicano, Native, all peoples, all workers coalition chapter. We represent everybody. We represent those who are disadvantaged at, from community, workers, unions, and also the current uh, issue with immigration. We're also working on DACA in California, too. But I want to say that right now, the importance of paying attention to what's happening in agriculture is very important, especially out of California and those states that are producing a lot of product. We are on a Driscoll boycott because people are being enslaved. Make no mistake about it. Children, look at this flyer. Children at the age of babies are sleeping in reservoirs while their parents pick these berries. No water being sprayed uh, over on their bodies with chemicals. We have people living in makeshift cardboard box housing with sticks holding them up. We have people who are working, they're being pulled into trucks, and the back of those trucks are families, children, and they are being sent out to fields to work 14-hour days, and then when they're sent back in, they get a small wage for one daily meal. That is slavery at its worst, and we're talking about 80,000 workers. We need you to support the Driscoll boycott. We are all here and standing in, in uh, unity for our brothers and sisters and dacas like my sisters and, and brothers who have said before me that it's not their fault that children were forced to migrate here through the NAFTA agreement. The NAFTA agreement has caused poverty. It has hurt workers in the United States and in Mexico. It's enslaved people. We are, we need to take our unions back. We need to make our unions stronger. We need to send a message to Washington that we're not messing around, that the people and the workers have the power. And we are not going to stop fighting, resist, be a part of this boycott. Right now in California, they're pushing another boycott. They're using fracking water uh, to feed the trees of halo oranges. And you know that palm, pomegranate juice that everyone likes so much? I love that juice. I'm not buying that juice no more. They're using contaminated fracking oil water to feed those trees. And that's poison. That's feeding our kids poison. Are we going to let that happen? No. Hell no. Are we going to let that happen? No. We are going to take back we are going to take back our power from these corporations, the global corporate uh, machine that is, is stealing food and clean water from people and citizens all over the world. Trust me, what is happening here is happening all over the world. I just came back from Europe and I found out that in Europe, a lot of the water, bottled water there is coming straight out of the groundwater of California. And there are towns in California that are out of water. There's no more groundwater. They are shipping water by, by, by big canisters and plastic bottles to homes and communities in California. And we have to say no. We need to protect our land, protect our water, protect workers, protect farm workers, protect DACA, protect yeah. our unions. Yeah. Yeah. I want to hear you say, si se puede. Si se puede. Aquí estamos y no nos vamos. Support our undocumented people. I'm just, I'm just here to offer support. I'm a union guy, union bricklayer, and I'm 100% uh, for these people. Everybody out here, I support everyone. What's behind the attack on immigrants in this country? I mean, immigrants built this country, yet they're being scapegoated, and it seems like they're being blamed for the problems in this country. Uh, it's just, it's, it's, it's been going on forever. We all know that. We all know the bigotry and the racism in this country, and uh, there's always someone to blame, and they're blaming these people. It's not those people, it's the people in the pinstripe suits that are uh, the problem. So they, they want them working for nothing? They want them working for nothing. I'm a union guy. They're not going to be happy until union guys make a dollar an hour and non-union guys make zero. Then they'll be happy. The elites will be happy then. That, you know what I mean? That's if immigrants are afraid to speak up, you know, then... Well, they're, they're afraid immigrants are going to... You know, want to f join unions, and once they join unions, we're going to get stronger and stronger, which I encourage. 
Cesar Chavez. I'm Beasley, local 551 Chicago Assembly. Um, I'm here in support of the the deportation of all, any and all people that, that are here in America trying to seek freedom. I'm a, I'm a war veteran. I spent eight years in the U.S. Navy, so I know how it is when people come in, in, into other countries to seek freedom and, 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 and a, a better peace of mind. And why are immigrants being blamed in this country for the economic crisis? Do you feel that they're responsible for this? None, none, no, nobody's, nobody's responsible but the people in power. The, the politicians and the folks that run this country are the people that are the reasons why this country is the way it is. Period. Has nothing to do with the people that come to work, all the laborers. Has nothing to do with us. It's, it's, it's the politicians that run the country. And, you know, the United States through NAFTA has moved work to Mexico. And the conditions of workers in Mexico is pretty bad at these it's, points. It's, 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 it, uh, the, the, the work conditions in Mexico are deplorable. They don't care about the employees, you know what I'm saying? It's, 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 it's rat infested, it's insect infested. It's, it's, it's unfortunate that, 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 that it's 2017 and nothing is being done about the mistreatment of people. Well, we're here at the... Uh, at the center of where they deport people out of Gary, uh, Chicago, Indiana, uh, the uh, deportees that are going to be deported. Uh, they're waiting for the plane. Or the plane's waiting for them right now, as you can see. And we're waiting for the buses to come by. Apparently, what they've done, the immigration people have painted the buses' windows white from the inside, so that no one can see from the inside, nor see from the outside in to see their faces so they can see that solidarity of the people that are here. That's to go to show you how much fear the, the policies of the Trump administration is now they want to hide the situation when it's pretty visible what they're doing. This is an airport. This is an airport that's obscure, small, hidden way out in pasture land, in cow land, outside of Chicago and in, in, in Indiana where most people are not even aware in this area that they're doing this in, uh, undercover, so to speak, instead of the commercial airline, when obviously the whole world can see. But the whole world today is here because all the media is here and there's hundreds of people here also being testimony to what's happening. And NAFTA has had some effect on forcing immigrants here, hasn't it? So here they, NAFTA forced the immigrants here and now they deport them? Well, see, most people in this country Failed to understand that most people that were deported, 11 million or 12 or whatever, they wasn't because of they wanted to come and they wanted to cross the border. They were forced to come and uh, to no uh, fault of their own. There was the policies of the United States capitalist system and capital uh, government now, corporate government, whose policies is to exploit workers in this country and also workers in, in Mexico or other countries in the Caribbean where they're pitting worker against worker. It's about profit and also the lives of people. And this question, this situation, is life and death. And what they really care about is the, the corporations is profit over lives. And they're going to continue to do that as long as working people in both sides of the border do not join forces in order to fight off the real enemy, the real um, complicit enemy, which happens to be the corporations. The corporations are the ones that we haven't been, you know, really highlighting on who's the real problem here. It's these financial institutions that were, of all things, were, uh, were how was it, uh, were saved through the whole question of, uh, of trillions of dollars of the financial system in this country, which is the corporations, the banking institutions, and they were being able to uh, save them from being going under, so to speak, but it was a theft. Basically, they stole the money from the working people in this country, then they come back and they take their taxes. But the fact is that we don't do what we're doing now, educating working people of all colors, of all sides of the border, that if we don't do that and build that unity, then we've lost a great opportunity. Today is an opportunity to be able to organize and to be able to mobilize and educate people and fight back. But that's the only way we're going to do it. In the uh, immigration system in the United States, immigration detention system, and it's important that now more than ever we pressure the institutions and we pressure legislators to defund ICE and CBP. They have the right to do, they have the ability to do this if they're going to call themselves champions for the immigrant 
community, then they can't just say it and not do anything about it. They have to back it up with their uh, power in Congress, right? So I just want to invite everyone, if you want to learn more about this work, you could contact me, you could contact Gabby, who's uh, my coworker, and yeah. We fired up, we can't take it no more. We fired up. Can't take it no more. All right. I don't have a voice. Uh, one of the biggest and ugliest private prison companies, GEO, tried three times, not once, not twice, three times to build a private immigrant prison here. They were defeated once in Hobart. We defeated them right here in Gary. They wanted to build it right across the street. They came back a second time and we crushed them. All right. And if they show their face again, we will crush them. No private prisons. No privatization and criminalization of anybody. That's the fascism. Not one more. Not one more. Scott just wants to repeat his invitation and directions. This is a conference not just for workers in unions, it's for worker centers, it's for the unemployed, it's for all of us, and it's building a national solidarity network which we need desperately. I'd like to say, first of all, that it's a it's a sad day for the, the folks over there that are boarding that plane. Our, our thoughts are with them and their families, and we hope them a safe return because they have a right to be here. Yes, they do. They yes, have they do. a human right to That's be right. here. Right. We are here to protect human rights. Right. We are here as part of the working class, and all of us need to join together in the working class if we're going to defeat the powers that are trying to keep us down. That's why we're having a conference at our union hall. The right. Thank you. The conference, the conference is going on the next three days, today, tomorrow, and Sunday. It starts about 9 o'clock in the morning, and um, it's a $25 fee, but all the meals are, are provided. So you get your money's worth back on the meals. So come on out, join us. Join us as part of the working class. Everybody here is part of the working class. And we need to join together and build these coalitions so that we can fight back. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be out here today. You know, I'm seeing a lot of old faces. Susan Hurley and I met about 11 years ago during the anti-war movement under George Bush when we were working with the Iraq veterans against the war. You know, some of the first trainings I received as an organizer was from the Coalition of Immokalee Workers. Who's aware of the Coalition of Immokalee Workers here? Those are some of the bravest and best organizers I've ever spent my time around. Those are people who reminded us when we were feeling down and out, beat down, tired, stressed out, their workers were being locked in the back of semi-trailers before they had to go out for another day of 12 to 14 hours of work. Those people are the folks who give me inspiration and motivation when I'm feeling down, when I feel like it's too much, when I feel like I'm losing hope or feeling disempowered. Those people remind me that the struggle continues and that we must always struggle as a community. And you know, we wanted to make an announcement about a welcoming city ordinance that Ruth led the way here and Gary getting passed. Alfredo Estrada, an attorney from Lake County, has head up these efforts throughout the region. In Indiana, for those who aren't aware, sanctuary cities are illegal. The best we could do in this state is the ordinance that was crafted by Alfredo Estrada and his team. It's called a Welcoming City Ordinance. We're trying to get them passed throughout Northwest Indiana. Right now, where I live in Michigan City, Indiana, the Michigan City Social Justice Group and Politics, Art, Roots, and Culture are organizing and fighting for this effort. We're having an event this Saturday, I'm sorry, October 14th, so next Saturday, at our venue in Michigan City, that's 1713 Franklin Street. Alfredo Estrada is going to be there. He's going to explain the ordinance to our community members and our elected officials, and we're going to expect them to pass it within the next month. Now, let me say something. 
There's a lot of folks I've been talking to since Trump got elected. They're scared to go out. They're scared to knock on doors. They're worried that their neighbors don't care. They're worried that their family members are going to be mean to them or whatever they're worried about. But let me tell you, we knocked on well over a thousand doors over the last week and a half in Michigan City, Indiana. And the overwhelming, the overwhelming number of people in Michigan City, Indiana, black, white, brown and otherwise support the ordinance and they want to stand in solidarity with their neighbors. So let's stop being afraid of each other. Let's stop assuming that people just don't give a shit or that they're too scared to come out. They like to see people who are organizing. Organizing breeds more organizing. So let's get rid of the cynicism and let's remember, as Ruth said, that we will win. Buenos dias. Mi nombre es Carmen Mata. My name is Carmen Mata. Yo vengo de San Quintín. ¿De dónde? San Quintín. San Quintín? Baja California. Baja California. Ah, San Quintín, Baja California. Baja California. Baja California. De los trabajadores y de la fresa. Ah, strawberry workers. Sí. Yes. Y yo estoy aquí en apoyo con ustedes, hermanos. Son mis hermanos que los quiero. Y también estoy en contra de que Este gobierno está deportando a muchos, a muchas personas. Cada viernes sabemos que deportan a muchos niños y a muchos adultos y están siendo separados de su familia. Y para mí eso es una injusticia. I, I can't possibly do that. <laughs> I am here in support of all of the young people who are fighting for their rights to remain here, and also as a strawberry worker, fighting to have safer workplaces and better conditions and to prevent the poisoning of your food. Estoy aquí porque yo estoy con ustedes. I am here because I am with you all. Yeah. Ustedes tienen una lucha. You all have a fight. Yes. Nosotros también tenemos una lucha en contra de Driscoll. We also have a very big struggle against Driscoll that is a strawberry producer. Yo no quiero que haya más familias deportadas. I don't want to see more families deported. Yo no quiero que haya más niños y personas sufriendo. I don't want to see more children and people suffering. Por estas deportaciones. By because of these deportations. Yo no quiero que haya más dolor en las madres. I don't want to hear and feel the pain of the mothers. Tampoco quiero que haya dolor en los niños. I miss that. No okay. quiero que haya dolor en los niños. And I don't want the young kids to have pain in their hearts. Que son separados de sus padres. Because they're separated from their parents. Queremos que DACA se respete. We want respect. For DACA. For DACA. For DACA. For DACA. ¿Por qué? Porque muchos ten, tienen el derecho de seguir estudiando. Because they have the right to continue studying. Y prepararse and prepare themselves. Porque los jóvenes because the young people son el futuro are the future de la nueva generación of the next generation. Y las personas mayores and the older people son la enseñanza are instructors, educators in this. Son la sabiduría. They have the wisdom que nosotros tenemos, por ejemplo, that we need. Por eso hoy yo digo That's why today I say que se respete DACA. That you respect DACA. Yeah. Y, y digo boycott a Driscoll. And especially boycott Driscoll. Driscoll. Que está lastimando boycott Driscoll. Well, because this is not a fight just for Hispanics. This is a fight for everyone. If you're deporting Hispanics, who will you deport next? Well, we all have to stand together. So this is, this is why African Americans are involved as well. Because we're all involved in this fight. And we're for, all for humanity, not just for race. So now I want to invite up a sister Shelly from the UE. Thank you. Good morning. I bring greetings of solidarity from the members of the United Electrical, Radio, and Machine Workers of America, UE. 
an attack on immigrants is an attack on worker rights and the working and living conditions of all U.S. workers. We need a halt to deportations and all other harassment of immigrants. We need to work on a fair immigration system that raises the standard of living of all workers instead of driving it downward. Immigrants are not stealing our jobs. Immigrants are taking jobs that would otherwise go unfilled. Respect for labor and the people that do it is fundamental to all workers' rights. When we consider best how to treat immigrants, we should remember that we are a country of immigrants built by immigrants. We salute sisters Pat and Joanne for their hard work with the Interfaith Committee for Detained Immigrants. Thank you. Uh, mi nombre es uh, Francisco Chávez, soy uh, miembro del sindicato de Local 1 y trabajo en el aeropuerto Midway. Uh, my name is Francisco Chávez, I work for SCIU Local 1 at Midway Airport. And why are you here today? I mean, as an airport worker, a service worker at another airport, why have you come to Gary uh, Chicago Airport? Eh, estoy aquí uh, junto con otros compañeros miembros del sindicato porque queremos mostrar nuestro apoyo uh, para todas esas uh, familias que están siendo separadas debido a estas deportaciones y también estamos aquí para apoyar a los jóvenes soñadores del DACA. Uh, I'm here along with my colleagues and co-workers uh, from Local One uh, to stop deportations and to support families who are being separated through this and also to support the DREAMers. And how does it feel when your fellow workers are terrorized by ICE and feel that they're going to be arrested, their children are afraid to go to school. I mean, it, it sounds like a terrible situation for, for immigrant workers at this point. Sí, es, es inhumano el trato que, que estos uh, hermanos nuestros reciben. Uh, eh, uno no puede cerrar los ojos ante esta situación. Uh, lo que debemos hacer es ser so, so, solidarios y co colaborar con ellos y uh, levantar nuestra voz y decirles que no están solos, que está, estamos aquí para apoyarlos y que estamos, este, estamos con ellos. Um, it's terrible the situation that they're in and the, uh, the feelings that they're feeling, uh, but we also can't close our eyes to what's happening. We have to be here to support them and to show them that we're uh, with them together in solidarity uh, for them to continue to fight. And you just were able to negotiate a contract for 12,000 workers at the airport, the airport workers. Do you think that this terrorism or the attack on immigrant workers threatens the right of immigrants to join unions? Are they afraid of joining unions because of the use of these laws? Uh, pues mu muchos de ellos sí tienen uh, ese temor de, 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 con todo este movimiento que está pasando de deportaciones y ataques hacia la comunidad inmigrante, pero esa es una de las razones que nosotros estamos aquí para mostrarles nuestro apoyo y, y, que, y que no se sientan solos, que no tengan miedo a levantar su voz y hacer reconocer sus derechos. Um, so they are, they have, they have that fear that... Um in regards to what's happening, all the attacks against the immigrant community. But that's why we're out here in solidarity, showing them the support, that we're here to support them so they won't be afraid to stand up and fight for their rights. Why are immigrants being attacked in this country? I mean, as I said, I mean, immigrants built this country. Immigrants built the roads and built the, do the work in this country. Why are they being blamed for this economic crisis? Um, Este país es, es un país que está hecho por emigrantes, entonces es, es uh, uh, no, no, no entiendo la razón por la cual el gobierno o personas detrás están uh, culpando a los emigrantes por algo que ellos no son culpables. Ellos quieren buscar un culpable por todos los problemas que hay en el país, pero definitivamente los emigrantes no son el problema. Uh, las deportaciones no son la solución al problema. Las deportaciones solo causan uh, gastos, separaciones uh, de familias, uh, sí necesitamos un, uh, componer nuestro uh, 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 sistema migratorio. Necesitamos una solución, pero las deportaciones definitivamente no son la solución a ese problema. Um, I have, you know, he doesn't believe that there's, he doesn't have an answer of why the government blames immigrants. Obviously, immigrants have helped the economy of this country you know, rise, you know, they have contributed to this uh, country. So we don't un really not understand why the government will feel that immigrants are affecting, you know, versus them helping uh, this country. The, the unions in this country, SEIU, AFL-CIO, they have millions of members. Do you think that the rest of the trade union movement should start mobilizing like workers are coming out here today? 
Definitivamente es algo que tenemos que hacer. Nosotros como, como, como comunidad trabajadora necesitamos unir nuestras fuerzas y trabajar en favor a, este, a la comunidad trabajadora y a la comunidad inmigrante, porque esa es la única manera que podemos, trabajando unidos, uniendo nuestras fuerzas, es la única manera que podemos defendernos de estos ataques por los que estamos pasando. Uh, most definitely, obviously, the unions coming together, helping, uniting, making us stronger to be able to fight for uh, our immigrant community, and obviously for the working people. Most of the working people in this country could be in an immigrant situation or were an immigrant at some point. Um, so they are the ones, we're the melting pot, we should be uniting all the unions working together to help the immigrant community. Dave Summerscales from SEIU Local One. Uh, we're here standing with the community to, number one, make sure that these deportations, which happen every day right over here behind me at Gary Airport, uh, that it isn't done quietly and secretly, which I think is sort of their strategy, kind of do it undercover. We're out here to, to kind of shine a light on that so that the public knows that this is happening and that people aren't going to stand for this. Um, that taking folks who are simply here to work hard, in many cases who have been here for decades, have done nothing wrong other than try to provide for their family, are being treated like criminals and flown out of the country um, sort of undercover. So we want, we're here to shine a light on that and uh, raise consciousness about that. And to say that uh, no more of these deportations. Let's defend DACA. Let's have a real path to citizenship for people.